Hey everyone, this is Judy with JLB Crafts. Welcome back to my channel, and if you're new here, thank you so much for giving me a try. In today's video, you guys, I want to talk about how I'm going to store the Planners Anonymous kits moving forward. Um, now that there's a sticker book and it's a 5x7 sticker book, I can't use my old storage. So the way I used to do it was um, I have these little, just they're just little Velcro envelopes. You can buy 20 of them on Amazon for just a couple dollars. I will link that in the description box down below. Um, but I kept everything big in here. So my I get the extra paper pack. So I have two sheets of vellum, two sheets of um, acetate, and then the six, sorry, 12 pages of paper all stayed in here. And then I have a box where I keep the stamps um, because I'm not really into stamping yet. It, although it's on my bucket list to get into stamping in my planner this year. And then there's the sticker book. Um, if you get the extra sticker sh pack, which I have for years, then you will get this gorgeous, amazing sticker book. Um, and then you all, in the standard kit, then you get the pen, you get some die cuts, and you get a couple of pages of stickers, and you get an art card that on one side has the introduction to the main character of the kit and an art card, and so you can use those. You get your two standard sheets of stickers, and I'm not gonna spend too much time going through this, guys, because I'm very careful to make sure you know what you get in the unboxings. Um, and then you get um, this, I believe this comes in the pack. This is like the backing card for all the die cuts. I don't know, can you guys see the die cuts in this little envelope I made? So. Um, what I used to do, you guys, the sticker sheets were smaller, though they were four by six. Oh, and the washi, don't forget the washi and the pen. I think I mentioned the pen. And there's always a bonus item. But anyway, so I have this gigantic um, photo album. It's a four by six photo album. It's super, super full. And um, I would put all of the pay everything in here. So um, let's go to vineyard. Where's Northern Lights? I want Northern Lights. There we go. There's Northern Lights. So you get the girl and um, this is like a die cut and then I would keep all my pages of stickers in here because um, they're all four by six. I would put my, my die cuts in here. Um, I would put my, my quote cards in here. Everything went in here and then I had the next kit. So this worked fine except for one thing. If you got the additional the weekly sticker pack, the weekly sticker kit. These are um, five by seven as well, so they don't fit in here. So I actually had these, and I have a video on this. I'll, again, I'll try to remember to link it in the cards up above, but I just use the, um, actually up until now, I've been using just normal five by seven photo albums for this. Um, and I, I showed my video where I unpacked a bunch of these. They had a big sale and I got a bunch and I unpacked a bunch. And so this worked fine for that. Most of these that I have are, a lot of them are for kits I don't have. So um, when they would bring these out for the older kits that I wasn't able to get um, my hands on, I would go ahead and get these. Now a few of them I love enough that I have the um, weekly sticker kit and the full full kit and I kept them in two different places and the problem is I know I know myself and I know I'm gonna pull if I decide I want to do Sakura I'm gonna pull one thing like I'm gonna pull this and go to these Sakura stickers and not mess bother with pulling these so it would be ideally great to have everything in one spot um, but I just really hadn't gotten around to dealing with it well now that the sticker books um, won't fit in here I had to figure something else out so I came up with this tri-fold folder and here's the really suit thing that I am so so excited about the thing that I waited um, to show you guys is these fit inside the Planners Anonymous B6 Melodies. So I finally got this in the mail. I never ordered any of the smaller Melodies, the B6 ones, because I'm a classic Happy Planner girl. I don't even have a small that I carry like in a purse or anything. I'm just, I'm classic all the way. So I never saw the need to have these until now because you guys, these hold a five by seven. So this is the extra sticker pack. This is for the masquerade kit. It's the only one I've gotten so far. But guys, the strings 
check this out. These fit in here in the Traveler's Notebook strings. Okay, so boom, kit storage, right? But what do I do with the other pages? Like, what do I do with the two extra sheets? And what do I do with the um, die cuts? And what do I do with the stamps? So I made this tri-fold folder that everything can fit in and it is just slightly oversized so this book fits in there as well so what you can do then is have everything in one spot just slide it under the string like this boom and there is my entire kit except for washi and except for papers and whatever, of course, the bonus item is. Um, but I put the washi here. So I tried when I designed this, I tried to come up with a way to incorporate as much of the stuff as I can. So I've got two different papers here. I've got a sticker from the kit. I've got the vellum here. I've got um, the sticker book, of course. I've got the uh, more vellum here. I've got washi tape. I've got, of course, the stamps um, and the art cards. And then this is the acetate that I made into a pocket that all the die cuts are in. So my die cuts don't slide around and go anywhere. So everything, you guys, is in here. Um, I, I love it. I think, here's the other thing. The um, melodies come with four strings. And so there's a thing you can do. It's called, I think it's called a jump loop. And I'll show you in this one. So what you do is you get these extra loops of string and you make a, a, just a standalone all by itself loose loop. I have some somewhere. I don't know where they went. Um, this is so the thing that's so cool about Traveler's Notebooks. Let me find them so I can show this to you. So I will link these as well in the description box. But these, so these are just loops. They're that same stretchy material. And what you do is, so let me see. Oh, there was one right here. I totally forgot. I had one right there. Okay. So what you can do, I figured out a way you can put one year of kits in a traveler's notebook. Four strings. You can put three kits on each string with these jump loops. So the way it works is I've got it through this book, right? I've just got it over the back cover. Okay. And then this side gets another one. So let me pull this apart just to illustrate. So this is how you would put three things in there. This one goes through this side. Like so. So I've got two, two kits right there on my jump loop. Okay. Then I take one of the string, one of the strings that's in here and I put it through there, right? So now it's centered, but I can put a third one right here. So now each of the street three strings can hold, or each string can hold three kits. There are four strings, three times four is 12. So you can fit one year on these four strings. There we go. So there would be the equivalent of three, three months worth of kits. So, so that way each one of these, these books can hold up to 12 a year's worth of kits. And they're so expandable, I could easily fit six kits in here. So that is going to be my solution. Um, I'm gonna make the tri-fold thing for each kit moving forward. Um, and then I can fit with these little jump strings, I can fit three kits on each of these. Right, so there's January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December. I can fit one year in each of these, and it, you know, it, I mean, it's a, it's Planner's Notebook, Planner's Anonymous kit, so why wouldn't I use a Planner's Anonymous Traveler's Notebook, the B6? Um, but you wouldn't have to if, if your budget just doesn't allow for one of these, you can just get any any kind of traveler notebook or you can leave them like on your bookshelf too so let me that that is my plan for storage moving forward um let me show you how then just quickly how i made this trifold folder because i have one in process and then I do have a solution I'm working on for if you wanted to put these on discs. I don't have it ready yet. I don't have a mock-up yet. 
Um, but I might go ahead and use that for some of my older kits since I go back. I have kits all the way back to 2018, 2019. So, so here's my mock-up. And I did not get extra long laminating sheets for this. I'll show you how I, how I laminate it. But um, here are all my measurements. So since, since this is, these are 5 by 7 and these um, extra kits are 5 by 7 you need to be just a tiny bit bigger than 5 by 7 so I'm 5 and a quarter Super Bowl fireworks I'm 5 and a quarter here I'm 5 and a quarter okay but I actually this one's actually a little bit smaller I lied 5 and a, overall size 5 and a quarter 5 and a quarter and five and that's so that since this is the flap that folds in there's plenty of space it doesn't rub or, or get caught um, then if you want to make the pockets you add a quarter for each seam so that's why I'm seven and a quarter tall so let me just show you so I'm working on the um, northern lights because I did buy the northern lights sticker book I've got the weekly kit and I've got the original kit. So I've got a ton of stuff to fit in this trifold. So here's the outside, here's the front flap. And this guys is the, um, the iPhone uh, screen background that I printed out. So if you don't have the papers, and, but you invest in the, some of the digital assets, there's plenty of stuff there that you can use. Because I didn't back then get the extra paper pack and so, I didn't want to waste the vellum and the acetate. So this acetate then is actually from um, the Under the Stars, um, but I figured it fit. This is a page from the um, Lux inserts that I just printed on the back side of this paper. So okay, so let me let me show you the outside. So there's the flap. This is one of the cell phone background screens that I just printed. This is the back side. This is from the Lux inserts. So this is going to be this one is this page. And then when you flip it open, I've got an acetate pocket. So again, this is just one of the pages from the Lux inserts that I printed on my own vellum and I cut it out. This center flap, then I have a piece of acetate. This is going to be the back side. I want to leave this plain so that the die cuts show up when they're inside the pocket. So this is the clear acetate so you can see through it and see the die cuts. And to make this curve here, I don't know if you guys can see that very well. I just literally, I laid this on my kitchen counter. I laid a dinner plate from corner to corner, the biggest dinner plate I have. And I traced it with a super fine Sharpie and then cut it, hand cut it with scissors to make that curve. And that way you can grab this once it's laminated and tuck the flap in. That's all I did. Um, so that, and so this piece of paper I left as tall as possible. So it's an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper. So this is the full eight and a half and that way I can cut the diagonals and have my flap to tuck in. So that's the center piece. This is the left side, the, the flap that comes in and then for my front side I have again another print from a luck page of a Lux insert that I just printed on my own vellum and then this is the other cell phone screen so all of this stuff you guys if you get the full kit you can use the papers out of the kit but you don't have to use the papers out of the kit so I've got I've got vellum if I was using just the kit the actual physical kit I've got acetate I've got vellum I've got the papers what I want to do is, um, there I couldn't find the printout of the stamps. So what I can do is um, actually stamp these on one of these, maybe this one so it will be behind. If I don't want to actually keep the stamps in here, which I haven't decided if I want to or not, but um, what I can do is stamp these on a sheet of paper and keep that in there so I have I know what stamps I have available. Or I could actually even print them on here. Stamp them on here, print them on here before I make the trifold so that they're included. I can put the washi tape on here before I laminate it. So that's some of the things that I'm playing with. <coughs> I haven't quite decided yet. So for this one, 
This sticker isn't actually, isn't actually under the laminate. I forgot about it. Incidentally, when you're pulling apart your washi tape, this is actually the sticker off of one of the rolls of washi tape. So those are great for labeling your kits as well. Um, and then, yeah, so, and then I forgot to put the washi tape on here. So I, this is over, again, the laminate, but you could include it underneath as well. Um, and that way you have all your washi tape as well for reference. You can see here I have my label on my on my kit. This is another one of those washi tape roll stickers. So the last thing I want to show you guys is how I um, use normal eight and a half by eleven, or I guess they're nine by eleven and a half um, laminating pouches for this. And you want to use five mil guys. Um, 10 mil might be tempting, like what you make the covers out of, but you're not going to be able to get it to fold easily that way. You want this to be a little bit thinner so it folds. 3 mil would probably work, um, but most laminating machines will do 3 or 5, and then if you go up a level, you can do 10, but you don't need 10 for this. So let me grab my laminating pouches. I'll be right back. So before I jump to the laminating pouches, you guys, I forgot to show you how I attach my pockets. So I cut, I want this one to ha be attached along this side and along this side. So if I show you the, the example, actually, I'll just show you my template. Um, it's open here, but it's attached at the bottom and at the side. And so to do that, I cut this pocket a quarter inch bigger across the bottom and across the side than I wanted and I'm gonna fold this. And I don't I don't have a scoreboard. It's actually it's a it's a board like this, but it's got lots of grooves and you you basically you line it up where you want um, to put your crease. But I just used the little divot here for my um, my cutting board and the nice thing is it's got the measurements on it too. So let me pull this open. So if I know that this is, I can measure it. This is five and a half and I wanna fold a quarter over here. So I just go to five and a quarter and I flip this down, but instead of cutting it, I have my nail polish dotting tool that I use when I wanna make a little dents for my spreads, um, and I can link this in the description box. But I just run this in the little crater where the blade slides, and it makes it makes the dent for me. And then I can go ahead and I actually have that. It's on the wrong side because I needed to line up the flat. Um, I actually need to dent it a little bit on this side. Don't cut. <laughs> But you can just run your little, you can use a ballpoint pen, although it'll make a, an ink mark. You could use a knitting needle or whatever you've got that's a little bit blunt. And just run through there. And then I want to do the same thing here. So I want this one, and now it's dented, it's scored, so I, it easily, it's, it's foldable now along that line. I want to do the same thing on this side. So I can measure over here. I can see where I'm at. This is, should be, let's see, six and a quarter, I think I cut it to be. Because of the diagonal cut, it's off a little bit. But basically, I just want to, I mean, it doesn't have to be exact. I just want to make that about a quarter. And maybe I'll come right to the bottom of that graphic. And again, I'm just going to run this down that little dent. There we go. And then since I have this out, I want to cut that little corner off. So it's also, your your cutting board probably has these lines. These are like 45 degree angle. So you can line up along there and just slide it until your little crisscross point is, is right there where the blade's going to hit. And then cut that off. My blade's getting super dull, so I got to be careful. But there we go. So now that's ready. So now I can just fold these over where I where I scored them, where I creased them. And since I cut that corner off now, it's not super thick in the corner there. 
There we go. And I use something blunt. You can use a bone folder. If you do this all the time, you have these tools. I don't do this all the time, paper craft like this. So I don't have all the tools, but guys, we can improvise, right? So there, there we go. I've got my, my little creases. Now all I'm going to do is tape under this down before I put it in the laminating pouch. So I'm going to grab, since that's so thin, I'm going to grab a piece of wax paper or I like to use this, this piece of contact paper that I um, used for a different project. I actually covered a board that I film unboxings on with, um, with that. So I will put a little bit of tape runner on these little flaps. They're tiny, you guys. They are tiny. I know you can't see what I'm doing, but just enough to hold it together. And then I want it like this. Make sure I don't have any tape runner on there. I want it like this. So it's actually easier if I go this way. So I'm just going to line this up. I know you can't see on my on the white paper, but so there's the bottom. Now I'm going to do the side. I'm going to unfold my crease. And I like the vellum be for the pocket because you can kind of see through it a little bit. It's opaque, but not solid. And if you get a little tape runner on the front, it's okay. It rubs off. Just make sure you do it before you um, stick it, obviously, in your laminating pouch. Okay, so there's that's creased. Now I can fold this down. There we go. Okay, so now, even if I didn't laminate it, I have a pouch. It's delicate. It wouldn't hold very well, um, but you could see the pocket. Okay? And I'm not the first one to invent this technique, you guys. Um, I just took bits and pieces from other people's videos. Katie, Katie of Katie's, um, Katie Baker uh, of Katie's Craft Studio. I will link her in the description box. Um, she has a version of this. Um, Lisa Mendoza has one. There are a bunch of junk journal people who have them. So, so there's my first piece. It's all done. If I wanted to put the logo on here, now would be the time um, before I put it in the laminating pocket. Okay, for this one then, since the vellum is clear, I have a quarter inch on three sides, a quarter inch extra. This one I want to fold around and cover the vellum so that it makes a closed envelope because um, it's going to show under the vellum anyway. So I'm going to go ahead and Speed this up while I do my quarter inch creases on the two sides and at the bottom. And all you're going to do, no matter what size you decide to go with, and you certainly don't have to go with my measurements. I went with the measurements I went with because they worked for the project I was doing. Measure what you've got and then come back a quarter of an inch. And then make your, your little dent so that you can crease. I don't know how well acetate would hold a crease like this, so that's another reason you guys to do the fold on the paper and not the acetate. Vellum holds a crease really well. Like it almost, it's so delicate, it almost rips when it creases, so. And then the other thing I need to do is cut the corners off the top so that I have my little flap that tucks into this curve. Now this one I made to fit inside. So I wanna put the tape runner on the other side of the flaps and not on the top. But I want to mark my spot here where I need to cut this. So I'm just going to grab a pencil. So right here is the top of my acetate. I want to go just a tiny bit higher than that. Okay, and then I'm just going to use that 45 degree angle again. So I only need one end of the line. So I'm lining up my paper on the 45 degree angle line. And I'm sliding right here inside the curve to about where the blade's going to hit. And then I do want to go ahead and do a score line here as well. So now I've got my flap. So I definitely though want to make sure I put this in the laminating pouch open, not closed, right? So let's go ahead and put, stick my acetate in. So I'm going to go all the way around these three flaps with my tape runner. I'm going to be real careful to stay outside 
the folds. And so the tape runner is so wide that some of it's getting on this contact paper. If I flip it over, I just pick that excess up and add it to what's already on the flap. So I just have a little extra on the flap there. That's what I'm doing in case you were wondering. So now I can lay my acetate in here. And this one is holographic on both sides. I mean, it really doesn't have a right side. So I'm just gonna lay that, center that in there. I cut it a little bit small on purpose so I would make sure it would fit inside the flaps. And we just fold these closed to make my pocket. There we go. And if there's any tape runner residue, it just now's the time. Rub that off. It rubs right off. Okay, and then when I laminate this, then this this laminate's going to stick to the acetate and laminate's going to stick out here, but nothing's going to be in here. So when I cut this open, then my flap can pop right in there. Just like that. And then you can hold your die cuts. You can hold any extra stickers that you make along the way. If you print out the quote cards and cut those, you can put those in there. Any of the little bits and pieces can go in this pocket because Sammy's been doing a great job making really teeny tiny delicate die cuts the last few kits. And um, I had to come up with a better solution for keeping them all corralled. And it actually, it's pretty cool because it actually ends up looking kind of like almost a shaker board. Um, if you've ever seen those dashboards that some of the paper crafters make where um, um, Ashley with Plum Mashable did a super cute one with popcorn. Um, those are permanently sealed and you it shakes. You put glitter and other things in there. This almost acts like it's shaker card, but you can open it up and get the pieces out and use them. So it's pretty cool. So there's my center, my back. And then last piece, um, I'm gonna just, I'm gonna beat it up again, but I'm just gonna repeat, do a mirror image of what I did over here. I'm gonna fold, do the bone, the folding technique, the creasing and folding technique on this one. Although this one, since this one's meant to hold slightly smaller pages, I did go ahead and put the extra um, corner on this one. So I'm gonna do all three on this one. So this one, the overall width is five and a half. So I'm gonna to come to five and a quarter and go ahead and make my little dent. And it just happens to line up on the black line of that graphic, the way I printed it out, that wasn't on purpose. There, I've got all three of my pockets ready to go. All three pieces. Okay guys, so I'm not gonna lie. This is the riskiest part, this, this part that's coming up. So if you just have eight and a half um, laminating pockets that are meant to do an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper, obviously it's not long enough. So the solution I came up with for this is to combine two of them and to cut them. <clears throat> so you want this seam to be strong, right? So this one, so what you're gonna do is cut a, a piece, off, a section off of each of these so that there's no overlap. So if I put if I cut the, I want the back seam, how to explain this? I want this seam to be, to exist. I don't want it to be a cut. So the back side of this pocket, I want to keep whole, but I don't want to double up. So I need to cut the back side of this sheet off so there's no overlap. And then the same thing with the front side, I don't want these two pieces to overlap so I need to cut the front piece of this one off. So in order to get that sizing I'm going to go ahead and put this your two ends are going to go all the way in the pocket no cutting. So I'm going to put this in and I'm going to line them up at the bottom you guys because I want this this flap to get laminated and we'll cut around it. So I'm going to put this all the way in the laminating pocket into the, the manufactured seam, all the way to the back. All the way in there, nice and straight, nice even across the bottom, not all the way to the bottom. You want there to be a little bit of a lamination bubble down there so that it gets sealed, all right? I'm just trying to get it straight. And at my house, you have to be careful to make sure there's no cat hair in there. Okay, so there we go, nice and straight at the right place in the bottom. 
And then you want to leave a little gap because you want you, you want to be able to fold the laminating pocket after it's um, sealed, after it's laminated. So, but if I do that, and then I do put this one in this side, so you've got a right laminating pocket and you've got a left laminating pocket. So I'm going to stick this one in here at the same level, near the bottom. So about, a, again, just about a quarter inch from the bottom, all the way into the seam, so now the problem I run into is I've got, I've got two layers in this middle and I want to remove them because I don't want any double. So I'm going to take the back layer off of that one and the front layer off of, of this one. And then you just got to line them up very carefully. So first thing I'm going to do is cut my layers. So I only have single layers. Oh, and then the last thing is since you're going to have a book in here with some thickness. Since this side is just a flap, you don't need much of a gap here. But you'll notice I have a little bit wider gap there. Again, another about a quarter of an inch. So when you line these two up, leave a little bit more, a pinky finger width of a gap in there. And that one you do want to overlap. You do want a double thickness there. So I'm going to line these up with my little bit of a gap. And then I'm going to cut this one off. I'm going to cut, trim this with a pinky finger width in it. And I'm going to cut this one off right here. Okay? I know, it's confusing. This is not for the faint of heart, you guys. And honestly, if you buy a pack of 55 mil laminating sheets, practice this first like I did with just some plain paper practice your measurements, practice how you're cutting things, and that way you won't waste your good paper. So if I put that there like that, and I, I find Sharpies to be helpful. So I've got just a really fine Sharpie. I know I need to cut the back sheet with my spacing to go around the book. So I want to cut it about here and this one I want to cut here right here so that it comes and seals this one but doesn't get to that one all right and then this sheet I need to come over to here so for this sheet if I just lay this on top and I look at where my gaps gonna be I know for this one I want to cut the back sheet off about here. So I want to go ahead and double up on that gap. I'm going to cut the back sheet off about there. And I'm going to cut the front sheet off clear over here. About here. Okay? So I'm going to cut, grab my big paper trimmer and go ahead and make those cuts. Okay, so this is where we're at. Um, save your scraps. I, here are my two big pieces that I cut off. I save those. Um, if you want to use um, scrapbook paper to make your own dividers, these are great for um, laminating the, the tabby parts that cut out. So anyway, all right. Or you could do business cards or whatever you want. So I've got my left hand side with the back cut off and I've got my pocket all the way in. I've got my right hand side with the front cut off and I've got my pocket all the way in. And the shiny sides are not gonna stick to the shiny sides. This fuzzy side is gonna stick. That is a coating of thermal adhesive and what happens is your laminator literally melts that and it bonds to either itself or the acetate and the vellum and the paper, whatever is in there. So the fuzzy side, the filmy side is going to stick to itself. So what I'm going to do, I have, I have a little overlap here to create the spine. And then this pocket is going to go here. Everything's at the same height across the bottom. I got my little gaps where I need my little gaps. Okay. And then this flips shut and should just meet with this pouch. So there's a little 
overlap back there to thicken my spine a little bit, but then these two meet here and that's what allows that flap to fold. Okay, so you guys, if you don't want to mess with this, it has crossed my mind when I go to get to the point where I'm doing a whole bunch of these for the 20 kits I already have, I am probably going to go ahead and order some 5 mil legal size laminating pouches. They make them, they're really not that much more expensive, and I think I can make this work with that size pouch because that would be 11 by 17 or eight and a half by what 14 and so this is 16 so I might have to resize some things what I can do is make this flap a little shorter so that that is just long enough but um, this is the solution that I came up with using the materials I already have on hand now I can hold this the way I did this one I just kind of held it as I fed it through my laminator to try to keep things from slipping and sliding that's definitely the risky way to do it. What I have here is just a plain manila folder because my laminator did not come with um, the, the pocket to lay stuff in. So what I'm going to do though is just put this all, line this all up. See it already moved on me. I'm just going to line this all up inside this pouch because it's suction cupped. It's like static stuck to my desk. So I'm just going to get it lined up the best I can inside this pocket and then I'm going to close it and feed it through and I see cat hair everywhere you guys oh my gosh we're going to be here all day if I try to get all the cat hair out of this I just live with it I love the kitties enough that it's worth it so all right so let's see I think I got this all lined up ready to go and I'm going to go ahead and trim the bottom off after this goes through the laminator so it's okay I mean, I want them to be straight because I want to be able to trim straight across, but this one's a little crooked. All right, so I'm going to speed this up while I send it through the laminator. I'll be back after it goes through the laminator. Okay, guys, this is this is what I have now. So it, it's really held together well. This is one sheet that ends here. I'm sorry. One sheet that ends here with a little bit of an overlap where the spine of the book will be. This is one sheet that ends here, so this already wants to fold because there's a cut in the lamination there. So what I, what I like to do at this point is send it through the laminator like this, folded, and the heat kind of makes that crease a little bit more decisive. So here we go, I send it through the laminator with this folded, and all it did was kind of heat that crease and now it wants to lay flat. And then I can do the same thing um, over here, only I want to make two creases. I want to make I want to make it go around my book. So the last thing we need to do, guys, is, is a little bit tricky as well. In order to make these into pockets, we need to cut. So I'm going to take a craft knife and I'm going to very carefully cut along here. Along here, the top row, curved row of my acetate. And along here. And that's going to open those pockets up. So if you have been practicing your kiss cutting, that's what this is like. You're going to cut through the top layer of laminate, but not the underlying paper. So start lightly. You can go over it more than once, but you can't undo it if you cut too deep. Again, just another reason to practice this with some scrap. There we go. So there's one pocket. Ta-da! Awesome. All right, let's do the next one. Okay, there's my second pocket. I'm going to cut my arc here. There we go. So there's my pocket where my die cuts will go. Okay, so the next thing I need to do is trim off all this excess um, and round my corners. So I'm actually going to use I'm going to use a metal straight edge for that because it's not it's gonna, it's too big to fit in my paper trimmer. You can use scissors to do this part too. You don't have to use a straight a straight edge and a craft knife. It's a little awkward as you can see. I think I'm going to use scissors for that. I'm just afraid my knife is going to go crooked. And then I have I have a corner rounder here. 
Um, I'm, I meant to round the corners inside before I did this, but that's okay. This one is the We Are Memory Keepers. It's the same people who make the crocodile. If you ground a lot of acetate, like I do, when you're making your covers, your corner rounders will go dull very, very quickly. So, and then the last thing is we just need to get this crease, which I, I creased the paper before I laminated it. So it would want to try to fold in the right spot. If you're having trouble, as I am, you can use a ruler. See where my crease is supposed to be? And bend up against a ruler. Like so, there we go. That did it. And then again, you can send it through the laminator with that folded and the heat will help to lock that crease in better. So, there's my pocket that just pops right in. I'll probably, since my printer picture stopped and I've got that white space there, I'll probably put some washi tape over that. But, And then the last thing I like to do is put a little curve in this with a hole punch so that the string has a place to lay. But there you go, you guys. That is my, um, my tri-fold Northern Lights storage. Um, I'm gonna laminate this, run this through the laminator a couple more times just to lock in these creases, and then I'll come back and we'll load it all up. Okay guys, so this is what I ended up with. I've got my, my trifold with my little fat edge. I rounded all four of my corners. I've got my pockets. So, and this is all the Northern Lights stuff I have. So I'm lucky enough, I was a subscriber back when Northern Lights originally came out. I did at the time get the extra um, sticker pack, but I did not get the extra paper pack. So this is everything but pen washi and papers. So I've got the die cuts, I've got the quote cards. The, well, what's left of the die cuts? I've actually used this kit a lot. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and load this thing up and just see how full it actually is. I even have, um, so I have the sticker book. I, I have the weekly kit as well. So let's put all of the die cuts and the quote cards and this little um, backing card that came with the quote cards. Oh, and the girl, I, and the girl, I like to put the girl in there too. So we're gonna put all of this stuff here in our center the clear acetate pocket that we made. There we go. Flip that shut, ta-da. Okay, got everything in there. Then I thought um, the, the stickers then, so this is the original extra sticker pack. These are the ones that are four by six. So my album is falling apart. It's too fat, I can't get the things in and out of it. So I'm gonna eventually make these for all of those kits. But these I think can go back here. No problem at all. It's a little bit thick, but that's okay. I, the pocket is bigger than it needs to be for this. So those go in there. All right, and then up here I can put the weekly sticker kit. This is so cute. So functional too. I mean, the big sticker strips, the, another set of days of the week, um, lots of checklist hydration stickers, and Sammy is super smart. She does seven of them. Um, lots of functional words, checklists. Here's some word Fetty, the weekend banners, um, another set of dates. Bills do work. Just love this kit. The weekly kits are awesome if you've never gotten one. There, there's a days of the week, so you can use this for meal planning or whatever. Lots of box stickers. Um, more of the same artwork that's in the kit. There's the main girl. And then gorgeous big double box stickers. So these are going in here. Just got a little sticky there. There we go. So that pocket is sized for those. And then I have the stamps. The stamps can go lots of places, you guys. I probably, like I said before, will not keep the actual thick rubbery stamps in here, but I will keep a reference page showing what stamps there are. So in other words, stamp all of these on black or 
Sammy's um, creating a page that shows what's in the kit and you can, this is on that page so you just print it out and cut it out and um, I'll probably stick that in here. It's pretty thick but I mean it's good it fits no problem. So and then this flips shut just like that. The sticker book there's room for it in here as well. So then this can go in my traveler's notebook. So let's just go to the next string. I'm not going to mess with a jump string right now, but I'm going to catch the trifold and the book. So I've got the trifold. There we go. And also on this same string, I'm going to go to the very back page. It's just preference. I like to go to the back page and put the book in there. So there we go. That is all all my Northern Lights stuff all in one spot. Um, and still lots of room. It's starting to look a little fat with only two kits in there, but the Northern Lights is the exception. I, we aren't going to have that as much stuff as that um, in the future. So there we go. There is my storage solution for moving forward with the Planners Anonymous kits. I This was a long one. I know as I edit it, I'm going to be trying to cut it down to around half an hour. But anyway, I hope you like this video. I hope it encourages you to um, use the stuff in the kits to store things in a way that is going to encourage you to use your stash. Use your stuff, all the pretty things. Um, what's the sense of having them if we're not going to use them? So if you like this video, please consider liking and subscribing. Thank you.